Now let's uh, come to Africa now, looking at uh, the issue of talent. I know this week on Business Morning, Ladi did discuss the issue of uh, retaining talent, and we saw Nigeria not doing so well. It was the list among, I think, eight countries on the continent at 14%, the percentage, uh, that's according to Handley and Partners, of uh, 14% retaining its talent. But let's make the most of a situation that may not look so good uh, with uh, Dr. Emmanuel Okeleji now. He's here in the studio. We want to talk about African talent mobility, how to make the most of it. Uh, Dr. Emmanuel Okeleji, thank you so much. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon. Great. So um, you're an HR person. Uh, you know, you are the co-founder and CEO of Simless HR. Yeah. So you deal with talent a lot. Uh, we've cried about Japa. So we want to stop crying about it. We want to make li uh, lemonade out of lime. How can we um, encourage maybe more movement, mobility of talent around the African continent? We're talking about after AFCFTA. It doesn't just have to be with goods, it can also be with services. What can we do? We know that there are issues of um, visa requirements, traveling, payment, there's PAPS now, I don't know how effective that is, you know, within the con the continent and all of that, but how can we make the most of a situation that doesn't seem so good? Great, uh, and again, thank you very much for having me. Uh, Seamless HR, just a bit about us, and to then bring no, that to your question. No, you can't talk about you, you talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring that to your question, because yeah. you know, when different countries across the continent, so we have customers in all these countries who use our software to manage their human resources, so we see what's happening in, for instance, Kenya, we see what's happening in Uganda, Rwanda, and Tanzania, and Nigeria, in Ghana, in South Africa. So and one can compare between countries um, and within companies in those countries to see the impact of the movement of talent. Uh, and that context is very useful for this conversation. Um, Nigeria is obviously the most blessed con country in the continent in terms of human resources. We have so many people in Nigeria. And unfortunately, the Japa you referred to is sort of skimming off the top. The most talented people in the continent is what we're losing, um, although we have younger people. An example of something that happened this week, I was, uh, my background is in medicine, the doctor part is, I used to be a doctor, and or oh, I'm still a doctor. <laughs> and I was hearing about uh, a very, very senior cardiothoracic surgeon who's leaving Nigeria um, and going back to the US. And then I read that the government is increasing the training of medical doctors, like medical students getting into medical school. Um, and it's gonna take you at least 30 years to go from a medical student to that surgeon, literally 30 years. So if you lose that surgeon, we're gonna wait 30 years to get those medical students coming through the door to be at the level of that surgeon. And, and so, yes, you know, the problem is a lot of problems. Um, yes, we do have a lot of people in Nigeria, Unfortunately, we also have the situation where those people are not very well employed. So to the question you asked about the Africa Free Continental Free, free, free Trade Agreement, um, visa freedom across the continent will help to tap into the full pyramid of the labor market. So that, you know, Nigeria, we have tilers who are making tiles coming from across the border, um, but we don't have a lot of Nigerian talent crossing across the continent at the base of the pyramid. Um, at the top of the pyramid, unfortunately, we're losing a lot of talent. And, and there's significant work to do there to retain that talent in Nigeria. And uh, hopefully we have conversations leaders there um, today. Hmm. Well, hopefully, because we are so short of time. But you see, I, I also noticed that the issue of virtual work yes. seemed not to have caught up. Uh, in, on the continent. So um, some people live in Nigeria and work for the US, you know, people's school virtually now. Um, wh why do you think that's not catching on? Because I believe if we had something like that, then you could have the use of talent, you know, broadly on the continent and beyond though. And then we still have our people. Absolutely. So there's a, there's a bit of that that's happening and it's more around tech jobs in Nigeria, where you have a lot of like developers, designers, product managers who live in Nigeria and working for American and European countries. I, I spoke to one of my former staff just two days ago, who says, oh, he's in Tanzania. So what are you doing in Tanzania? He says, just vacationing because he works for European and American companies now, he earns USD. So there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a class of people who do that 
profitably in Nigeria right now. But where we can unlock it in a big way, so you look at India, for instance, places like Bangalore, where there's a lot of um, customer service jobs that are sitting in India, but these guys are picking up phones for customers around the world. And we have a unique advantage because, one, we speak English in Nigeria, very good English, if I must say. Um, Two, we are at a position on the on the time zone where it's sort of like close to the GMT in such a way that we can walk shifts to the west and to the east of the world. So that's significant. And, and the encouragement here is that for governments and the private sector, and there are people already beginning to do work in that area where we can ship a lot of accounting jobs to Nigeria, customer care jobs, a lot of jobs that people can do remotely at scale beyond the, the, the young programmer or developer who is looking for a job for themselves. Hmm. So where do we start from? You know, <laughs> you manage talent. And I, I, I do much interacting with colleagues and it's not easy to manage human resources. Yes. But where do we start from uh, for the continent in this issue of maximizing our talent, even in the face of, you know, like the example you gave, greener pastures out there? Yes. You know, it's uh, Africa's contribution to global productivity is less than 3%. Um, and we have close to 20% of the population on the continent. That is a big issue. And in terms of where do we start from, we need to s declare a state of emergency, if you must, on talent training and upgrading of talent in the continent. We do need to declare a state of emergency. Because what we have- What do you mean by state of emergency? Because we have a state of emergency on food insecurity. It doesn't change do we, do, do we really have a state of emergency? Well, it was declared by the president. No. Well, well. <laughs> so what do you mean by state, declaring state of if emergency? If we have 20% of the world's um, population in terms of human beings, and that population is growing, by 2000, we're gonna have 40% of the population of people in the world. Um, but we have very, very low productivity we have very low productivity. We have very low um, sort of quality of life for those young people. Is what's supposed to be a demographic dividend is going to become a disaster because if these billions of young people in Africa do not have a job and cannot live gainfully, live gainfully, that's going to show up as famine. It's going to show up as wars. We have a lot of fault lines in the continent where. If, if things begin to crack, it will crack along ethnic lines, religious lines, um, economic lines. A lot of those things are just trouble waiting to happen. So a, a true set of emergency is going to be investing in training talent because human beings is raw material. It's training that converts raw material to finished goods. So we do need to invest seriously as a matter of emergency. And I mean a real emergency because this thing will crack if you don't do something about it. It's just keep giving back to people and you don't give them means to live and grow, something is going to give and it will give. It's not a if, it's a when. And so investing in training and converting the raw material to finished goods. Um, and Nigerians are some of the brightest people you can find anywhere in the world. And training people with the skill sets that are globally relevant. Um, and that's happening already in technology, but we need to do more work. I mean, not to the south, to the east and west, everywhere across right. Nigeria. So we need to do more work. on human resources and talent Absolutely. management. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, this afternoon, Dr. Emmanuel Kelleji, co-founder and chief executive officer of Seamless HR. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Great.